Church, everybody, who is that? I want to hear. Woo Listen, if you cannot have fun in the presence of God, you have came to the wrong place. The scripture says that if we don't worship Him, then the rocks is going to cry out. And listen to me. I don't want a rock to get my praise <laughs> from my Lord and Savior. Can I get an amen for that? Good. Let's all stand up to our feet. We've got an amazing service. I want you guys to um, worship God. However you see fit, uh, Facebook, welcome. We're so glad that you guys have tuned in. So without further ado, man, let's praise God with everything that we have with this first song called Solo. Let's go right here. Thank you. 
just so many things that you believe are just going wrong and people's hurt you. You don't understand this whole Christianity thing. Are you on the mountaintop where everything seems to be going good? You feel like you're a good Christian because you can check off boxes. I go to church and I pay my tithe. And, but I don't mean any of that. I mean, what is your personal relationship with Jesus like? When do you cry out to him and him alone and praise him for what he's done or, or beg him to save you if you're in a place that you don't feel like you belong? What's your circumstances like this morning? No matter what, what's going on, no matter your, if you got positive things happening or negative things happening, God wants to use your circumstances to grow your faith. Let him do that this morning. Let's pray, and then we're going to jump into two more songs and uh, prepare our hearts to hear the message. Okay, so Father God, Lord, I ask that we can be real in this place, and as we're watching on Facebook, God, I just believe you, and I believe the Bible, I believe it's, inf it's infallible. And God, and you say when we're gathered together, you're here. And so God, I know if you're somewhere, if your spirit is somewhere, then anything can happen. For the ones that walked in the door and they knew they were coming because they come here every Sunday. For the ones that's never came to church ever in their whole entire lives, and this is their first time. God, I believe that you have something for them. Anywhere in between. And so, God, I ask that you would help us surrender our lives to you. If it's going good or if it's all falling apart. Because as children, we're in your hands. Let us be real with you today. Starting up here and even out into the crowd and out into Facebook land. Wherever we're at. God, I ask that we can surrender our lives to you. Give us courage to do that. Strip away pride this morning. We'll give you praise for it, I, I promise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Hey, everybody. Um, I am so glad that you guys are here today. We are finishing a series called The Five Things That God Uses to Grow Your Faith, and today is kind of the, the end of the movie. So, but if you missed anything, you can go back and watch. You can go back and watch on, on Facebook or whatever and, uh, and, and tune back in and go through. Because We've looked at the five things that we think are pivotal, five things that God uses to grow our faith. Being in a position of a pastor, which is a, a, a blessed thing, it's, a, it's an honor to get to be a pastor, but part of the job makes me privy to people when they're going through some of the most difficult things they'll ever go through in their life. It, it, I kind of get a front row seat to people's worst days. And, and the, the opposite is true too. Sometimes I get a front row seat to the best of days. But what happens is that in everyone who has faith or, or they, they've decided to follow Jesus, something comes along. A, a circumstance comes along and sweeps them off their feet, takes the wind out of their lungs, changes the trajectory of their life and their plans. And I have watched people make one decision or another to lean into God when those situations happen, and they will happen, or to turn away from God when those situations happen. And so I want to talk about that today. And, and I hope that as we dive into this, I hope that I'm able to somehow, through the scriptures, that God is able to teach us and to give us a new theolog theological category for this. Because I'm going to be honest, this is not a fun message to, to speak about, but it's absolutely necessary. And if every one of us will build this category into our life, we will be far, far better for it. A pivotal circumstance can be the catalyst that brings God back into the conversation. And you guys have had stories like this, or you know people in your life who had stories like this. Something happened, something they had no control over, a circumstance that blindsided them. He left, she left. We lost her even though the daughters did everything. We, we, we didn't even know that she had that diagnosis, but she did, and we couldn't control it, and we lost her. You know, he ran, she ran away, he ran away. I, we went completely bankrupt, whatever the story is. And then on the other side of it, looking back now, they're like, you know what? That circumstance, as terrible as it was, it brought God back into the conversation for us. C.S. Lewis has this quote. You might have read it before. God whispers to us, in our pleasures, speaks to us in our conscience, and shouts in our pain. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Now, when it comes to this idea of tragedy and pain and sorrow and these circumstances that come into our life, there may be those, and you may have been one of those, maybe you're in the room now and you're thinking, you know what, I don't even know why I'm here. I really don't even believe this stuff. In fact, you might say, whenever I bump into somebody who's gone through a tragedy and then they talk about how God got them through it, I think that they're just doing God a favor. I think they're using him as a crutch. I think that the God that they're serving may not even exist at all, and so they got to come up with a reason why it all makes sense to them. Why would a good God allow bad things to happen? to good people. And, and you may be in the room and you may be feeling that. Like, oh no, I, I've heard this before. And every time someone gives God credit for some terrible thing that happened in their life, all they're doing is helping God out. They, they need to give him a crutch to stand up under because no good God would ever allow something like that to happen to them. And so today, as uncomfortable as it is to talk about, I want to give you a theological category for this. Because you need it. I need it. And because it's truth. And, and, the, and when we're willing to grab a hold of truth, as uncomfortable as it is, it can be the thing that gets you through what's next. And there is so much a theological category for this that James, the brother of Jesus, and this isn't the, the text we're going to spend the bulk of our time in. I just need you to see this. James, the brother of Jesus, who in, at the end of things ended up, at the end of Jesus' time here, ended up actually worshiping his brother as God. And so that is a really big deal because you would never do that with your brother um, like I wouldn't. But Jesus did something that made James understand that he is who he said he was and that he did what he said he could do and he worshiped him as God. And he wrote some amazing things. I just want to show you one thing. James says this in James 1 verse 2, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. And I'm so glad he didn't tell us a specific kind. I'm glad he told us that any, any trial, many, many different kinds of trials that you come, you need to consider it joy. Well, hold on, James. 
How can it be joy if we go through something like that? Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. James, are you telling me that God will allow me to go through something because he's testing my faith? Absolutely. And it doesn't seem fair. And it doesn't seem right. When we start looking at the minuscule, we start looking at that one circumstance. Who in the world, who in their right mind would put someone through that? James is saying, no, 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 hold on. You got to have a bigger picture here. Yes, you're going through something, but you need to consider it joy when God is testing your faith because it produces perseverance. And then he goes on to say, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature, complete, lacking, not lacking anything, lacking nothing. Because, and you've seen this before, you've seen people go through some horrific events in their life and they look back and they tell you the story and they're like, I'm telling you, God got me through that. And you're thinking, how in the world can you be that mature about this? Because that's what happens. Something happens to you, it tests your faith, you persevere through it, and then perseverance equals maturity and completeness and a great character. You can go the other route. In fact, you may have gone the other route. And you know that it didn't get you where you wanted to go. And you've seen people struggle with this. You've seen people walk through difficult circumstances. And instead of saying, you know what, I'm going to push, I'm going to push through, I'm going to trust them anyway. Life doesn't get better if you walk away from God in the middle of difficult circumstances. There is an undeniable relationship between pivotal circumstances and our faith. Undeniable. You, you will go through stuff and you will not be able to disconnect the two. It will have an effect on your faith, no matter how small your faith is or how big your faith is. Now, I think the story that illustrates this probably the most completely I'm about to put up on the screen. But listen, if you, if you know the Bible, if you've been to Bible study, if you've sat in Sunday school class, your mind's going to go to the end of this story. Please don't let it, okay? Let, just slow it down and let's walk through these verses one at a time as if you'd never heard them before because I want you to see this new category that we need to have in our back pocket. If you're not going through a traumatic, crazy, pivotal circumstance, you will. And you will need to think about this when that happens. So here's the story. Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, he wants to clarify so we remember who connecting the people. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. I love that. Because it's, it's exactly where, where you and I are. This, in other words, Jesus, this isn't somebody you don't know. This isn't somebody that just ran into you on the street. This isn't some woman who just grabbed you by the ankle as you were running by and who needs something from you. This is, this is someone that you love. And, and so much so that we don't even have to tell you his name. We just tell you the one you love and you already know. Oh my word, they're talking about Lazarus. Something is wrong with Lazarus. And so in their mind, in their heart, they're thinking, if we, get, if we can just get this to Jesus, he'll fix it. If we can just get it to him, he'll take care of it. If we tell him he's sick, he's got to come straight here. Now, Jesus is about four days away, walking distance, and they, get a, they send a message to him, just like you and I. Jesus, we need you right now. Right now, we need you to do something. And that's what's going on in Mary and Martha's heart. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, no, no. It's for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through this. Hold on. There's a category to where something terrible is going to happen to somebody and your end game, Jesus, is to see God glorified in it. But don't you understand what Mary's going through? Don't you understand the pain in Martha's heart right now? Yeah, I, I, I get it. But, but, but there's a plan. And Jesus loved. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick... He stayed where he was two more days. Now, your category and my category says, hold on a minute. No, 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 no. It says Jesus love. That means if Jesus loved, Jesus runs. If Jesus loves, he's coming for me. If Jesus loves, he's not going to let another second go by and let me suffer any pain at all. He's coming running down the road. And this one says, no, 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 no. Jesus loved them, and because he loved them, he stayed two more days. So Jesus, are you saying there's something connected here that's even more important than my feelings and my emotions? Are you trying to teach us something bigger than what I think you're supposed to do for me when I need you to do it? And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. After two days, let us go back and let's, let's go back to Lazarus. Now here's an interesting 
connection here. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews tried to stone you, and yet you want to go back? Hey, Jesus, this doesn't make any sense. We were just through there. They tried to kill us. By the way, Jesus, when they try to kill you, they try to kill us as well. And so why would we go back that way? Why don't you do that thing you do? Remember when that guy came, the centurion, and his servant was sick, and, and the servant was like, no, 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 I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. Just heal him wirelessly from here. You know, do your long-distance Bluetooth thing and heal him from here. Can't you do that now, Jesus? Can't you just take care of Lazarus from here? I mean, you did it then. Can you just, because if we go through there, they might, you see how they're thinking they got their own agenda. Mary and Martha's like, this is what we want of Jesus. And the disciples are like, no, 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 this is what we're going to tell Jesus to do. Anybody relate? Okay, don't, don't, don't raise your hand. All right. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble for they will see by the world's light. And it is when a person walks at night that they stumble for they have no light. I, we don't have time. This is a whole sermon, an amazing teaching that Jesus is giving his disciples. Read it for yourself. Go back. I don't have time to dive into that, but that is an amazing teaching on, on how we should view how God works in the world. We got something else going on. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. His disciples, if he's asleep, he'll get better. I mean, we, we can't even understand what is going on right now. Why are we going putting ourselves in danger? Why are we putting you in danger if he's just asleep? See, Jesus here is teaching them another theological category. For the Christian, for the believer, for the follower of Jesus, you don't ever really die. You just take a nap. And then you're, you awaken his presence. But they're not getting that. They're not seeing that. He goes on. Jesus had been speaking of, of, of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then Jesus told them plainly, okay, Lazarus is dead. Because that's, you know, we, we need that. We need to just, just tell me like it is. And he's trying to teach them. They're not listening. All right, fine. Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I was not there. So that you may believe. <laughs> Hold on a minute, Jesus. Are you saying that if you weigh out the importance of taking care of someone's physical health and me believing in something that the belief is more important than Lazarus's life? Yeah. Are you saying that my belief and my faith in you outweighs what trauma, what tragedy, what experience I could go through? Are you saying that my faith in you is, more, is bigger than what you're teaching me through the circumstance that you created? You see, this just isn't a, a happenstance, a circumstance. This is something that, this is a pivotal circumstance in the life of Mary, Martha, Lazarus, and the disciples that not just happened, but Jesus created this experience for them. That's uncomfortable. Because you could be going through a circumstance that God created you to go through. And it will feel, if you're Mary and Martha, it will feel as if, oh my word, where is he? More than likely at this time, Mary's out on the highway watching for Jesus because they know he's got to come. He loves us. He's coming down the road. And then Mary is in the house and she's taking care of Lazarus. Hey, how's he doing? He's not doing well. I'm still looking. He's going to come. I'm telling you he's coming. I'm watching for him. He's coming. Hey, switch places with me. You take care of him. Mary's out there. Mary, where is he? I don't know. He's not coming yet, but I'm, I think maybe, maybe he's over the hill. Maybe he's on his way. How's Lazarus? He passed away. Okay, that's okay, because Jesus can do more than, he can bring him back. Just keep looking, just keep looking, just keep hoping. And we've all been there, right at the last minute. And he didn't show up for a while. Finally, he says, but let us go to him. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. You know what he's saying? she's saying? She's saying the same thing you would say, same thing that I would say. Jesus, this is your fault. This is all your fault. You could have done something. In fact, I know you could have done something. I've seen you do things that's beyond comprehension. If anyone could have done it, you could have done it. Where were you? This is all your fault. And some of you have gone through situations where you lost a child, you lost a parent, something that you, could, you had no control over, a tragic accident that nearly ruined everything. And the whole time you were like, he could have stopped this. He could have prevented it. But I know that even now, see her faith is still there. Even now, I know God will give you whatever you ask. I, we don't know all that you are, 
Some of us think that you're going to come back and take Rome with a sword. Some of us think you're just going to he- be here for a while, do some miracles and run away and disappear. We don't really understand it all. But I do know this because I've seen too much. I know that if you ask God for something, he does it. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And then it's, it's basically like he's telling her or she's hearing the same thing we hear at a funeral, right? She says, well, I, I know, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection on the last day. You know, when you're at a funeral and you're like, you're going to see him again. I know, I know I'm going to see him again. And it doesn't help, does it? I mean, it's not very comforting, is it? When some, they're in a better place, all of those things. That's what, that's what she's hearing. It's what Martha's hearing. Jesus, don't tell me that. You could have fixed this. I know I'm going to see him again at the resurrection. Jesus said to her, Martha, I am the resurrection. I am the light. You're worried about this little circumstance right now. You're worried about him dying. You're worried about me not being here when you want me here. You need to see there's a bigger thing here. And the bigger thing is, yes, he'll be resurrected. But you need to know even bigger than that, I am the resurrection. And you, you speak of life, but Martha, you need to know I am life. Those things are far bigger than the circumstance that you, that you find yourself in right now. The very circumstance I created for you to get this, finally. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? That's that question that goes right to you and right to me. Do you believe this? Do you believe that in the middle of the most traumatic, most hurtful, most painful, most most horrific circumstance, that even in the middle of that, God may be teaching you, showing you, that if you will take the decision, and there will be a decision, a choice you will have to make where you will lean into him or away from him. And the whole purpose is for him to help you, show you, lean into me, because your faith in me as the resurrection and the life is far greater than this feeling you're feeling right now. And I'm telling you, if you will make this a theological category, you will go through some horrific things and be okay on the other side. But if you ignore this truth, if you push this away, it could be the downfall of your story, of your legacy, of those who are watching you. Jesus is teaching them something really, really important. He goes on. This is far bigger than just you getting your way, Martha. This is far better than you getting your way, far better than me getting my way. This is far bigger than that. All right, go to the next slide, please. Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. And then they they continue a conversation for a little bit. Jesus is finally like, okay, take take me to the tomb. Take me to where he is. So they get there, and then the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. Now, you know why this is so important? Because even though you may be going through something you can't even comprehend, you need to know that Jesus feels it too. And even though he knows the end, he knows what he's about to do, but he is surrounded by his children who are hurting and don't understand what he's doing in them. And so he feels for them and he weeps. Don't ever think that he is a a God who seeks to just, you know, treat us like pieces on a chess set, or he's just playing with us for his fun. Never, ever. He's a God who died for us, and the whole reason he does this and allows us our faith to be tested is so that when we go through that, he sees our pain and our suffering, weeps with us, because he knows on the other side, oh child, oh child, if you could just see what I see when I look at you. If you could just see you in two years. If you could just see you in three years. After you're through this, don't walk away. Don't lean the other way. Lean into me. I'm doing something in you that nothing else will be able to do this in you. It's only this and it's only me. Trust me in this pain. Then the Jew said, see how he loved him. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time, there's a bad odor. He's been in there four days. You know, in her mind, she's not thinking resurrection. She's thinking maybe he wants to go in and visit, go in and see him. She's like, ah, it's a bad idea, Jesus. It's a bad idea. And Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took, so they took away the stone. And then Jesus looked up and said, this is so cool. I, I love that they put this stuff in the Bible. It's amazing. He looked up and he said out loud so that everyone around could hear, okay? You're there. Picture this. You're there. Father, thank you that you have heard me. 
I know that you always hear me, but I said this, is everybody listening? I'm saying this for the benefit of the people standing here that they may believe that you sent me. God, are they all looking? Are they all watching? Can they all hear me? Can I do the thing that you told me to do now? I want to make sure everyone's paying attention. Is everyone paying attention? Okay, good. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed in him. But what about the pain? They believe in me. But what about the suffering? They believe in me. What about the smell? They believe in me. What about Lazarus? He believes in me because he went through what I allowed him to go through. Jesus didn't just leverage a pivotal circumstance. He created one. And he may be creating one in your life. Creating one in my life. As I was going through this, this question came to my mind. Because like I said, I've seen this a lot of times. I've seen people go through some very difficult, terrible things. What has the most influence on whether you lean toward or away from God in a pivotal circumstance? What has the most influence? And you will go through something. You'll go through something you never saw coming. You'll go through something that will shake you to your very core. What, is the, what makes the difference between whether you lean into God or away? And I'll tell you. It's who you surround yourself with right now. Who's in your circle? Who's going to be the one to look you in the eye and say, I know this is hard. I know this is difficult. But you keep trusting him. You, I'm praying for you every single day. Uh, listen, I'm going to encourage you. I'm here for you. I know you don't know how to get through tomorrow. I'm here for you. Having someone with you when you're going through this is the key thing. Do not go through this alone. You are created for community. Mary and Martha and all the Jews, could have been 30 or 40 or 50 people that were there with them, they had a community of people. The disciples were a community of people. This body is a community of people. And when you're going through something, you need to know that there are people around you, your small group, your circle, that's going to be there for you. Because it will make all the difference whether you lean in or lean away. And you have a choice. Every one of us has a choice. I want to show you a story of um, someone someone in our church who, who shared with me their story. And I thought, we got to share this with everybody. Because if, there, there, if there's a pivotal circumstance, this is it. And, and she had to make a choice. Just watch this real quick. Hello, my name is Jessica Strickland. I've lived in Bainbridge since I was seven years old. I'm an occupational therapy assistant, and I now attend Bainbridge Church. I was basically raised in church since I was eight years old. Um, I always wanted to be able to share my testimony with people and you know, to help them to be able to grow closer to God and everything. And I just, I never felt like I was, like my testimony was adequate and everything, kind of like what Laddie was preaching on um, last Sunday. And so um, the way that, you know, I never, I wasn't, I was always considered a goody two-shoes because I was always in church, I was always in the youth group, I was always doing the right thing. And um, so I didn't feel like I had one of those awesome testimonies. And so I kind of... um, stayed in like the baby Christian phase where and I was 30 years old and so um, God finally put me through a pivotal circumstance where I would be able to share my testimony. On June 9, 2015, I decided to come to Tallahassee and um, it was raining really bad and on Highway 319, uh, I was I got in the passing lane to pass the car in front of me and I hit some water and I hydroplaned and all of the trees that were in the median, I smacked those pretty good. (laughs) And so, um, yeah, I had a wreck, obviously, and they had to cut me out of the car. In the hospital, I was, I guess I went in a coma on the way to the hospital. I don't remember any of that, of course, and, um, but, Uh, I stayed in a coma for 19 days. Um, I had broke both hips. I had broke my neck. I had three traumatic brain injuries. I could no longer breathe on my own. I had to have a trach in my throat. Um, I had internal bleeding because my spleen had ruptured, so they had to do exploratory surgery 
on me and a collapsed lung. <laughs> I have I had to have a feeding tube, a chest tube, um, a urinary catheter, and they put um, red casts on both my calves. I stayed in the hospital for two and a half months. I'd have speech therapy, occupational therapy, which is what I do now, and physical therapy, where I had to learn how to walk again. And there's a video um, of me walking. And um, so I had to learn walking, balance, all that good stuff. Uh, my daughter, Abby, was six years old. And when I was in the accident, my relationship with Abby has been definitely affected. Um, before my accident, Abby and I had a great relationship. Not that we don't anymore, but um, it was just totally different. And I had brain injuries, so I was very temperamental. And, and um, I would get very aggravated with her at the wrong time. And so, um, yeah, it, it, it did affect our relationship. I got out of the hall. Um, hospital on August 18th and January 7th or so I started occupational therapy assistant school and I um, decided to become an occupational therapy assistant myself so I can now use my story to help my patients I can encourage them and especially on days that they don't want to do anything or don't feel like doing anything I, I use that um, as a way to encourage people to participate in therapy which increases their independence and helps them be more safe and be more successful in the task that they're trying to do. I, I've always given God all the glory for everything that I've been through and everything that He's gotten me through and I tell my patients that you know, I don't know what you could be going through at the moment um, but you know, sometimes God puts us through a pivotal circumstance to, in order to shape us into you know, the person that He needs us to be to glorify Him and to get us to that point that we need to be to be most successful for Him. So, um, you know, I don't know what you could be going through, but don't worry about it. Don't be afraid. Just pray and ask Him for His help, and you'll get through it, and you'll be a lot better on the other side. thing to think about when you're going through something like that. When you lose a parent, you shouldn't lose a parent. When you lose a child, you shouldn't lose a child. When you go through something like that, you're going to have a phrase in your mind. God is doing this to me. And if you can't remember anything else today, if you'll remember to never think that God is doing something to you, put it up here like this. God is not doing something to you. We don't see that in scripture at all. What we see is God is doing something in you so that he can do something through you. And if you only focus on this, if you only think God is doing something to you, then when that tough situation hits you, you're going to lean away from him. But if you'll remember, that is not the case at all. He loves me and wants me to become the best version that he, he created me to be. He knows me better than anybody, and he's got a plan for my life. And he's not doing something to me. He's doing something in me so that he can do something through me. It changes everything. And you'll be able to get through that. And you don't know who hangs in the balance of you surviving and getting through and showing faith in God through that. You don't know. Who needs to hear your pivotal circumstance and how you stayed true, stayed faithful to God? And I'm telling you, 
Tragedy and pain is a terrible thing. I, I know. But your heavenly father leveraged the most painful and the most tragic event in history for you. The death of Jesus on a cross was not just something that happened. It was a pivotal circumstance that God created in order to save anybody who's willing to understand that faith in him is bigger than any moment. It's bigger than any pivotal circumstance. It is the thing, the only thing that matters in eternity is where you place your faith and trust. And he used a pivotal circumstance that was full of pain and tragedy, perhaps the most painful, most tragic thing that's ever happened on the planet in order to woo you, in order to win you, in order to show you that there is a way back. And you're going to go through something tragic and you're going to go through something painful. And you have the choice. You have the choice to decide, to believe that he is the artist, that he is the potter, and that you and I, we're just the canvas and we're just the clay. Father, thank you so much that even in the middle of trying to walk through a very difficult truth, that it is a truth, and it's a truth that if we'll hold on to, we'll be able to get through those things that life throws at us and those things that you allow us to go through in order to persevere, to be mature, and to use our stories, to use our stories to get someone else through something they could never survive survive without it. Would you give us the ability and the courage to go through it and to tell others what you've brought us through? Would you give us the ability to be the canvas, to be the clay? We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, for those of you that don't know, um, my dad was an amazing person who ended up getting um, brain cancer, uh, ran marathons, was a pastor, the best guy I've ever known in my life, and um, he got brain cancer and ended up taking his life. And, um, man, I, I was mad at first, right? Um, but then I made a vow to God and to myself that I didn't want his death to be in vain. If God was trying to get my attention, I didn't want that circumstance to pass. And so when I look at people's circumstances like Jessica, I mean, Jessica's daughter and my daughter are best friends. I've known her for a long time. We were in a a band together, and three of us, not me, but the women, you know, we had daughters, and all three of them were within a five-week span. It's crazy. But I think about her, and so I think about her family and, and, and her cousins and brothers and sisters and grandparents and all of this, and I wonder, are they letting that circumstance pass? Just like with Jesus, with the circumstance that that he did, dying on the cross for us, are we letting that pass? He'll forgive you. He loves you more than you can ever imagine. He wants you to be humble. He wants you to care for others and be surrendered to him. And every single one of us, not every single one of you, every single one of us can do that. If you need a time of prayer, come and pray. If you need to talk with Laddie, he's right there, okay? Let's all stand to our feet and just have a time of response.
There's a healing light just beyond the clouds. And though I've walked through fire, I see clearly now. I know nothing has been wasted. No failure or mistake. You're an artist and a potter. I'm the canvas and the clay. You make all things work together for my future. And for song okay so if you guys need anything you need prayer you want to talk we're here we want to help um just know that this series has been uh, i mean it's been so helpful to me and i hope it's been helpful for you as well next week we're jumping into a brand new series you won't want to miss it um and then also remember you've got something you want to talk about about t tonight yeah so um oh, t turn me on there johnny hey thank you thank you so yeah so two things um if you need to know what your next step is if that's groups, if that's giving, if that's serving, whatever that is, I'm going to be in the back left corner right over there by the guest sign. Come see me. We want it to be obvious. We don't want you leaving here going, what do I do? Um, if the Lord spoke to you or if you feel something inside of you, come come talk to me. Um, if you're a middle schooler or a high schooler or if you know of a middle schooler or a high schooler, we want all of them uh, tonight in the student building uh, we start at 4.30. We'll get done at 6 o'clock. Um, we're going to be getting into talking about habits. So if you have them or if you don't, then um, come on by, okay? We're going to have Chili Cheese Dog. We're going to have um, a Goodwill fashion show. All okay, right. if you need to know what that is, come see me. And that's just for the kids. So mom, dad, y'all don't dress up and come on. Actually do that. I'll yeah, take no. a picture and post it. So next step. Come see me, um, youth, middle school and high schoolers, tonight is your night. If he was waiting on an invitation, 430 to 6. Awesome. Thank you. Chad, if you brought a gift, we have boxes at the back. You can drop it off or give online. We're just so thankful you guys are here, and we'll see you right back here next week as we start a new series called Taking Responsibility for Your Life. See you guys in the hall.